Good morning. Today is the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Mass this morning is being offered for Donald and Beatrice Thorne. Rest in peace to Joe Stan Cabbage and George Mazel, who were buried this past week. And this week's second collection will be for the Building Fund. There will be a live mandated reporter training on Wednesday at St. Patrick's. You must register, please see the bulletin. And we are in need of donations and supplies for our upcoming Apple Dumpling Fest in November. Please remember, this is all of our parish, and we can use you all to help and get involved. This Friday is the Feast of St. Margaret Mary Alacoa, Founders of Devotion to the Sacred Heart, Exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, with the Litany of the Sacred Heart will be at 8.30 a.m., and adoration continuing until noon. We are also in need of some help to sanitize the pews after Sunday Masses. If you could, please give us five minutes of your time, and please return the completed census form and your donation as soon as possible. Thank you to those who have already sent in the completed forms and donation. Please pray with me the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness of the sins of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please rise and greet Father Bill.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines. Juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad who has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Inverted pastures, he gives me repose. Inside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of well, the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in Him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Come to the beast. 
Some ignored the invitation and went away. One to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroy those murderers and burn their city. Those then he said to his servants, the feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go therefore into the main roads and invite to the feast whoever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord. It's actually a two part parable today that we hear for our Gospel reading. I want to basically focus in on the second part of the parable. But we'll just take a second and, and look at the first part. We hear that. This king, or maybe this family, is planning this wonderful wedding. And they invite all the people that they want to be there. And then all these people start coming up with all kinds of lame excuses. And they become hurt, and they become upset that these people who they thought highly of, are not coming. In the second part of the parable, we hear that the king says, well, if they don't want to come, they don't want to come. They were invited, they said no. But this is the wedding of my son, and I'm going to give my son a wonderful wedding. And so we hear that he sends his servants out to invite anybody to come. Anybody that wants to. And the kingdom of God is for all of us, not just for select few. So that should make us feel good that we're all invited and the Lord goes out to the byroads and to the highway and says, come to the feast. But then there's that disturbing part where the king goes to greet the guests and as it says, he comes across a man not dressed in a wedding garment. And the king questions him. How could you know that I invited you and you did not bring your wedding garment? And the man says absolutely nothing. And then the king throws him out. That used to really be an oxymoron for me. You're invited, but then because you're not dressed right, you can't show up. It's like when we used to make such a, a big deal. When you come to church on a Sunday, you should wear your Sunday vest. Women should wear a dress. Men should wear a sport coat and tie. And then we had the rebellion and coming in jeans and sneakers. And, you know, God doesn't care how I dress and all this other stuff. We got too carried away in the materialism. I forgot to see what was Jesus was trying to say in this parable. In the parable, we are asked to see the righteousness of God, to seek it. We sang that as our entrance in this morning. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will happen unto you because you seek the righteousness of God. God comes first. A few months ago, how many months now, Emily? Two to three months? You don't, you don't know, you remember that day? Four months. Four months ago, we had a beautiful wedding in this church for Emily and her husband, Eric. And it was in the middle of COVID. And we were going back and forth, and I said, Emily, you know, if you want to postpone this to another time, if you could find another venue or any of that other stuff. And without embarrassing her, Emily said, Father, I really don't care. She said, it would be nice if I could have my friends. But I really don't care how many people are going to be here. It's about the sacrament. It's about Eric and my life being joined together in Christ. And that's the most important thing to me. Emily then had to do CPR on me for a half hour because in all the wedding couples I prepared, I never heard anything like that before in my life. It was about the reception, it was about the food, it was about the bride, it was about the musicians, it was about how long is this going to take because, you know, we have this and we have that. What exactly is the righteousness of God? Unfortunately, we take the righteousness of God and we turn it into Frank Sinatra's song, My Way. It's my rights. It's what I'm entitled to. And because we quote unquote are good people, that we feel that it's God's way too. In the Old Testament, righteousness was one of the chief attributes of God, which was portrayed by a concern of ethical conduct. If I lived the law, if I did what was good, then I'm living in the righteousness of God. Maybe back in the Old Testament times, that was the way it was, but it was a very legalized system. And they found all these loopholes. On the Sabbath, a good Jew could only walk so many feet in the course of the day. So what did they do? They determined that walking with sandals on. So they would take their sandals off and throw them as far as they could. And wherever the sandals lay, they were walking in their bare feet so that didn't count. In one of my other assignments, one early evening, the doorbell of the rectory rang. I answered it. And there were two grandparents holding a little infant in their arms. I had known these people. They, they, they came to church on a regular basis. Didn't really get to know them. They were some of these people that don't hang around, that, you know, they're out the door and are gone. But I knew them, knew the faces, knew their names. I said, Father Bill, this is our little granddaughter. We'd like you to baptize her. And I said, oh, she's cute, and that would be wonderful, and when are you talking about getting the baby baptized? And they said, well, we're wondering if you could do it right now. And I 
said, well, where's your mom and dad? Well, you see, they came home this weekend for their class reunion, and we're babysitting, but they don't go to church anymore, and we're concerned because the baby hasn't been baptized, and we know that the church says you have to have the baby baptized, or the baby, if something happens to it, isn't going to see the face of God. So, we want you to go we'll baptize the baby real quick, and the parents don't even have to know about it. Uh-uh. Try to be kind, try to explain. They left very disappointed. It was the last time I ever saw them in church again. They were good people. But they didn't get it. The righteousness of God is fulfilled through Jesus Christ. And this righteousness that Jesus came to preach to us about, for us to live, is our faith. Being a good person does not make a person of faith. In this age of relativism and secular humanism and agnostics, and God doesn't really have a part in my life. We lose the whole aspect of faith. Faith in God who gives us so many good things. You can be a great person, you can be a good person. But it doesn't mean that you're a person of faith. And if we're not a person of faith, we're not going to get to the banquet. If you've been to a funeral lately, or if you've been to a baptism, and you want to engage in some discussion, you might say to me, why does the baptismal ceremony resemble the funeral rite so much? You know, you have to pass the candle, there's blessing with water, and most especially, there's the baptismal garment. At a baptism, you bring a little child in a baptismal gown. You know, my own family, my godmother bought the baptismal garment that I was baptized in, but then she sort of became the keeper of it. And so my other 19 cousins were all baptized in the same garment. And then some 30 great-grandchildren of my grandmother were all baptized into the same garment. That baptismal garment is the putting on of Christ. And in that, is the rights and the privileges that we have through the sacrament of baptism. I become a child of God. You become a child of God. Your children's children become a child of God. My earthly parentage, Bill and Joan, Adam and Eve, original sin, but in the sacrament of baptism, we put on faith in Christ, and we pledge that we will model our lives after Jesus Christ. In the funeral liturgy, we cover the casket with a pall, a white garment, once again symbolic of our baptismal garment, that now as this person gets ready for their eternal rest, they have put on Christ. Now we still know that there's final judgment. And that's between the deceased and God. But if that person has lived a faith-filled life, not just a good life, but a faith-filled life, the rewards of heaven are theirs. So I hope now that line where 
king finds the guy not dressed in a wedding garment, it makes a little bit more sense to us. Do we put on Christ? Do we emulate Christ for others? Do we witness Christ for others? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will happen unto you. Hallelujah. I believe in one God.
may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept the Lord the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raise up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Blessed Apostles with St. Clair of Assisi, 
and with all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs from eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Strengthen and shield them, 
For those working to contain the spread, grant them success. For those afraid, grant peace. May your precious blood be our defense and salvation. By your grace, may you turn the evil of disease into moments of consolation and hope. May we always fear the contagion of sin more than any illness. We abandon ourselves to your infinite mercy. Amen. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty, most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so that you may make us sharers of his divine life, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in 